Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to another podcast here at Invite Health. Today, we'll be talking about a diet. You may know about it, you may not. It's pretty popular. It's called the ketogenic diet. You may be on it, or you may roll your eyes when you hear about it. We will talk all about the ketogenic diet and all the details, but first, my name is Melissa Bischusser and I am a registered dietitian. I am so excited to bring to you the nutritional aspect of nutrients here at Invite Health. Nutrition, food for thought. Our food should be our medicine and our medicine should be our food. Invite Health promotes an integrative approach in providing vitamins into your daily life to increase your quality of life. In conjunction with nutrients, it is also important to learn and include other lifestyle modifications like nutrition, exercise, and sleep. These practices with the use of vitamins will promote optimal benefits in your daily life. Well, let's get talking about the ketogenic diet. Some of you may know it as the keto diet. This has been proven to be a therapeutic diet designed to help treat children with epilepsy that continues to spike even with medication. The ketogenic diet has helped about 40 to 50 percent of children who have started with 50 percent less seizures and approximately 10 to 20 percent of these children achieve more than 90 percent reduction in seizures. This diet is recommended for all the younger age population even infants. It is not recommended for adults as the options are extremely limited and it's very hard to maintain the diet for a long term. The keto diet consists of high fat, adequate protein, and very low carbohydrates. The diet ratios generally consist of 70 to 80 percent fat, 20% protein, and 5-10% to carbohydrates. The ketogenic diet helps to reset our body use of food. Carbs in the diet, as we know, is sugars and starches, are generally our main source of energy. The reduction of carbs will put our body in a metabolic state called ketoacidosis. Though the ketogenic diet, the lower amount of carbs will train your body eventually that the new energy source will be from fat instead of carbs. It will turn the fat into ketones in the liver, which will help to supply energy for the brain. As we have previously discussed, carb is the body's main energy source. If we do not consume carbs, the fat in our body will be used for energy, but our body will fall into ketoacidosis. Ketoacidosis is when the body reduces the consumption of carbs, limiting the body's supply of glucose, otherwise known as sugar, which is the main source of energy for the cells. In the ketogenic diet, protein is consumed moderately. Protein can be converted to glucose, and if consumed in higher amounts, they may slow your transition into ketoacidosis. Being in a state of ketoacidosis, especially at an older age, can lead to lower blood pressure, high cholesterol, kidney stones, constipation, nutrient deficiencies, and an an increased risk of heart disease. But is being in ketoacidosis bad for our bodies? Well, being in ketoacidosis for a long period of time may lead you to have vitamin deficiencies. The keto diet often is lacking in sources of water-soluble vitamins, including B vitamins, which are essential for healthy nervous system and energy metabolism. Being in a ketoacidosis state is not recommended for longer than six months. Therefore, using the keto diet is a not sustainable sustainable for the long term. If someone is looking for weight loss, they may achieve that goal really quickly by going on the keto diet, but then down the line, six months later, when you try to reintroduce carbs back into their diet, the likely of them gaining all, some, or even more weight is very high because carbs naturally have water, which means they're increasing their weight right away. 
Though research has been suggesting that following a keto diet may have some benefits, such as weight loss, type 2 diabetes, and blood sugar control, there are several adverse effects to be aware of. The adverse effects can be muscle cramps, bad breath, changes in bowel, keto flu, and the loss of energy. The keto flu is basically temporary side effects of starting the keto diet, with symptoms such as headaches, foggy brain, fatigue, nausea, difficulty sleeping, and constipation. This can last about a week or so, but in extreme cases, it can last up to a month. Think of it like this. Going on the keto diet is essentially giving yourself the flu, which most of us are trying to avoid or prevent from happening. The overall challenge that we find with following a low carbohydrate diet is limiting your intake of vegetables, fruits, grains, and increasing your fat intake. In a sense, this is truly detrimental to your health. In the long run, a low carb diet and increased fat consumption will stimulate inflammatory pathways, oxidative stress, and promote biological aging. The biggest issue is that it is so hard to sustain a diet that is low in carbs and high in fat. People love the initial weight loss. It's excellent for diabetes control, but slowly they'll get bored of eating the same foods day in and day out. Then they go back to eating carbs and their weight gain is increased and their diabetes is no longer under control. The main key takeaway here is that moderation is key while learning the proper tools to eat a healthy, well-balanced diet for the long term. In the long term, a diet plan will help to be able to sustain, be less risky, and hopefully prevent diseases such as cardiovascular or certain cancers. So you may be asking, what does it mean when I say moderation is key? Well, I'm going to keep it super simple for you guys. Remember this, having a plate half of it should be vegetables, a quarter of the plate should be protein, and a quarter carbs. But there's a little bit more detail. The vegetables that should be half the plate should be non-starchy vegetables. For example, that could be lettuce, cucumbers, tomatoes, broccoli, Brussels sprouts. And if you want the full list of non-starchy vegetables, feel free to email me at mbistresser at invitehealth.com and I will provide for you the non-starchy vegetable guide. A quarter of the plate should be protein, preferably lean proteins or plant-based proteins, chickpeas, lentils, stuff like that. And a half of the plate should be carbohydrates, but try to stick to whole grains like brown rice, farro, quinoa, or starchy vegetables such as sweet potatoes, potatoes, and butternut squash. If you can stick to having your lunch and dinners looking like this, then you just learned what moderation is rather than following a keto diet with the potential for health risk factors from the keto diet. Again, moderation is key and you just learned what that means. Unfortunately, people who do not experience epilepsy have been going on the bandwagon to follow the keto diet because it's become the fad diet of the month, year, and so forth. They found out that the keto diet helps them to lose weight quickly. They did not look to see the long-term effects and issues that can bring up consuming such a high-fat diet and a low-carb can lead to serious medical conditions. The keto diet can cause individuals to have disordered eating and is not safe for individuals without epilepsy. But even individuals with epilepsy should be following the keto diet with healthcare providers by their side to monitor. The diet has side effects for the long run. As children with epilepsy grow up, we want to make sure that it's not interfering with their growth spurts or brain or brain function. It is crucial to follow the keto diet with healthcare providers. If your child has epilepsy, please consider to talk to a healthcare provider before going to follow the ketogenic diet on your own. If you do not have epilepsy, please consider just learning about a healthy, balanced lifestyle diet to eliminate the long-term risk factors. If you would like to talk to a healthcare provider here at Invite Health, feel free to go on our website at invitehealth.com. For any further questions, you can always chat with me as a nutritionist or any of our healthcare providers to assist you here at invitehealth.com or email me at mbistresser at invitehealth.com. I am Melissa Bistresser, RDN, ready to share the knowledge 
to help you modify your lifestyle to live a happier, more successful life. I'm looking forward to continuing to provide you with educational podcasts and blog posts. Again, nutrition, food for thought. Our food should be our medicine and our medicine should be our food. Have a great day and tune in for the next podcast coming your way soon.